Well, happy Tuesday. Welcome back to my channel. Well, today we have an interesting comedian. We have Kristen Lanier, L-I-N-D-N-E-R. Uh, I found her good, so I'm going to give her a good rating. She's a lot of fun, and uh, after she's over, I'll have a story based on one of her stories. So, Kristen, take it away. Uh, we are trying to keep the romance alive since we've been married for so long. I will tell you that the other night, he did say I was really hot. <laughs> yeah. And then he told me to move back to the other side of the bed. Because <laughs> he was trying to sleep. <laughs> Going through menopause. <laughs> I am too hot for teacher. <laughs> <laughs> Being a teacher, that is a tough job for me to be married to. <laughs> it's hard on me. He has to wake up at stupid early hours, and it's really hard for me to get back to sleep. <laughs> I mean, lots of times that I'll be on the computer trying to make vacation plans, and then he'll have to get on so he can make lesson plans or whatever. It's hard. Yeah, I had to repeat the seventh year of our marriage. Because he caught me cheating. Oh, no, no. No, no, no. Well, not what you're thinking. No. I stopped doing laundry, and I was just for breezing everything. <laughs> I do try to be a good mom. I do try. When my kids were little, I only had two at the time. One of my friends found out I had kids. He didn't have kids. He had no idea what parenting meant. But he decided to give me some parenting advice anyway. He said, Kristen, you know what you need to do now that you have kids? You have got to get your kids pets, because pets are very important when you have children. Pets teach your kids responsibility. They're educational. Run out and get your children at least one pet. Yeah, thank you, hillbilly Dr. Phil. <laughs> so I took his advice, but we were in an apartment, and all we could have, according to our lease, was hamsters. So I took my two small children to go pick out one hamster. That was the plan. But you don't take two kids to get one anything. <laughs> so I took them to the pet store. We get, the door, we get to the door, they each beeline in opposite directions, and before I can catch up with them, they've fallen in love with a different hamster. <laughs> and I'm like, oh. So I asked the kid working there to check them and make sure that they're both girl hamsters, because we can only afford one cage, and the, bee, the birds and the bees and hamster husbandry was a little more education than we were looking for. <laughs> <laughs> and this kid checked him. He said, you're good to go, ma'am. These are two female hamsters. You've got two girl hamsters right here. So we bought those two hamsters and the cage, and we took them home, and my daughters named them Hope and Joy, and it was adorable for about three weeks. And I <laughs> thought they were having little, little hamster slumber parties and a hamster sorority house, and it was Kai Rodenta. I don't know what I thought. <laughs> I was all excited. <laughs> for about three weeks, until it turned out that Joy was a boy. <laughs> And we had hamster babies, and that's when it got educational. Because I don't know if y'all know this, but hamsters eat their young. Mm hmm Yeah, it got real educational real quick. Because then I had to explain to my small children why this mommy hamster ate her baby hamsters. I said, well, 
see the mommy hamster, she knew that there was something wrong <laughs> with her babies. <laughs> and so she had to eat them. <laughs> Which is gross, I know that. But it really has helped out a lot with the discipline at my house. <laughs> Because apparently that's all you have to do is scare them real good <laughs> when they're little. <laughs> and then you can use that forever. <laughs> My youngest wasn't even born then, but she still knows the lesson of the hamster Greek tragedies. <laughs> I'll be like, I'm sorry. I believe I've asked you to clean your rooms three times and you still haven't done it. See, I've been afraid there might be something wrong with y'all. <laughs> and Mama's getting hungry! <laughs> so the big news at my house right now is that my mother-in-law just moved in with us, his mom. <laughs> yeah, those crumbs are correct. Um, <laughs> She's never liked me. Uh, and I was really, I was really nervous. And I have to be honest, I have been pleasantly surprised. Uh, it's been fine. She's, she's been quiet. She's mostly stayed in her urn and left us alone. <laughs> I'm kidding. It's a joke, we couldn't afford an urn. She's actually in a box inside a crushed velvet bag that says Crown Royal on it. <laughs> I do have to get out of here. Um, you guys have been very nice. I do want to, uh, I was uh, sleeping with my husband the other night. All right, fine. He was sleeping. I was plotting. But the point is, <laughs> I think he was having a nightmare or something because the legs were kicking. He was flailing around on his side of the bed, like, uh, 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 right? Like he's being chased, right? He's running from something scary in a nightmare, like a monster or something. And I, I felt bad for him. So I reached out and I went, gotcha! <laughs> <laughs> oh, good times. <laughs> His heart stopped for nearly two minutes. <laughs> and then I had to go sleep downstairs. <laughs> oh, not because he was mad, because he wet the bed. <laughs> and I didn't have any Febreze handy. <laughs> Thanks, you guys, so much. I'm Kristen Linear. See, we are still here. Uh, there were rumors last week, I think, uh, when we recorded this last Tuesday, that maybe closing would be Friday or Monday. Nope. Next Monday, the 14th. And it's cast in stone, supposedly cast in stone, but that's the day it's supposed to be. But I have a story. And not many people can say they have hamster stories. I have a hamster story. So here it goes. I was a senior in high school. Now, we're talking 1961. Yes, 61. So most of you probably weren't even born yet. And I was a senior in high school. You know, I'm old. I, I get all that. So... I was a credit shy from graduation, so I took in my last year an agricultural course. Yes, that's right, an agricultural course. It was worth two credits. And you learned about farming, and uh, being a future farmer was a, the FFA was a big thing in that, in that course. 
and you had to do a farm project. I didn't live on a farm. We were renting a one acre piece of property with a house in the middle from Philadelphia Electric. And they probably weren't really keen on me plowing up the whole yard to put a garden in, because the garden had to be a yard, I mean an acre. And it was obviously no place to put a calf to raise a farm animal. But in the garage, we had an old chest freezer. I mean, an old one. It didn't work. Uh, it didn't even have a lid. But it was one of these real long things, like six feet long and three feet wide and three feet high. And I got this idea that I could raise hamsters in this thing. So I approached my instructor and I said, can I raise hamsters? He said, well, that's not a traditional farm animal. I said, yeah, but I have no place to do a farm animal. And this is the only thing I have space for are these hamsters. And I do have a market. I had already made arrangements if I had hamsters that I could sell to a pet store in town. He said, well, as long as you have a market and you keep track of everything that happens, you can do the hamsters. So I said, okay. So I went to the farm market, to the, uh, I went to the pet store and I bought hamsters. Four, I think, or maybe six. Now, hamsters are one of the most prolific mammals in the world. They will breed every six or eight weeks. So I'm seeing dollar signs and baby hamsters all over the place. And I set up this freezer so I had an incubation place because hamsters will eat their young if you don't separate them soon enough. And where they could be born in the whole ball wax. And I kept a logbook on all these hamsters. The only problem was they kept disappearing. And I would clean out the freezer and I would look for holes and I couldn't find any holes and I to this day I'm not convinced that hamsters could cl climb a stainless steel wall. They don't have suction cups on their feet. But they kept disappearing. And I never had baby hamsters. Because they kept disappearing. So when it came time for me to leave, to graduate, so to speak, and that's a, a story unto itself, but I'll give you a little hint. I had joined the Marine Corps on a 120 delay program, which means I was leaving right after high school graduation. And my instructor says, uh, you can't graduate until you finish your project. And I said, I have no project. The hamsters kept disappearing and I can never find them. And I never got any young ones to sell. So the project was a total bust. And he gave me an incomplete. No, no graduation. A graduation ceremony, I got a blank piece of paper. It said, good luck next year. And two days after that graduation, I was in boot camp down in Paris Island. Well, that's my hamster story. To this day, I have no idea where those hamsters went. I had the most prolific mammal in the world, and they bred nada. Now, either the guy at the pet store sold me all one sex, which is probably what happened, because telling the sex of a male and a female hamster, you have to be very, very good at it, because they don't have little things hanging down. The males don't have little things hanging down when you pick them up. So, that's my hamster story. Sad but true. A tale of woe. Uh, on, the, on a side note, I ended up getting my GED, which I did okay on. I ended up getting a, a, a BS from LaSalle University in Philadelphia. So, not all bad. But that's my hamster story. Enjoy it for what it's worth. Hopefully next week I can say we closed. We still may not be in the house yet, but at least we're closed. Have a nice week. Stay healthy. Stay safe. Bye.